Hey everybody, this is Shane McLaughlin, Platinum Architect at Salesforce. Uh, I'm going to show you a really quick lightning component this morning. So I'm going to, I've opened it in Salesforce One, because that's where I've got it. And the purpose of this component is to show you popular records. The popularity of the record is determined by how many followers it has. And so if a lot of people have followed it, it will be a popular record. And the, the idea here is that you can see the list of records, and then you can click on one and it'll take you to the record, All right? It's pretty simple. The uh, couple things that I wanted to do that were special here was to make this generic enough for any record and to make it usable within the Lightning App Builder. So I'm gonna drop out of Salesforce One for just a second. Actually, I'll leave it open and just work over here so you can see what's happening with the App Builder. This component is called Get Popular, and if I click Edit on it, I've added a couple of design parameters that let you specify some useful things. And so if I click on this component here called Popular Records, I can specify the object and I can specify um, what number of days to look back in terms of uh, the last modified date of the object. So, if, and, and that's kind of here in the, um, in the help text. Um, so it might be a really, really popular record, but if no one's used it or touched it in two years, we don't really want it on the list. And that way the users can control how recent this stuff should go back, whether it's, you know, most popular opportunity of the day, or maybe things don't change that often and it's a six-month period. And then you can specify uh, which fields you want to see. And so right now I've got the, the name, and so that's field label and then the field value. Um, but if I wanted to change this to something else, so for example, I've got an object in here called equipment. If I change it to equipment, you'll see it's showing these things. And then if I want to add some other fields, um, I'll just grab a field off the equipment and see what's, see what's useful. All right, so how about equipment type? That's a problem. So here I just make a comma separated list instructions say here and then now I've got equipment name gas meter equipment type meter and then if I want to uh, look back even further I can change that oh there's one more that hasn't been modified in a little while but it was still liked by at least a few people and, uh, and that way you can set what you want there and then the last thing we've got is the the record limit so if I just wanted to see you know, the two most popular fields, or the two most popular records, even if we're looking back for a longer period, these are more popular than that third one, which, you know, just isn't that popular. Um, so that's that's a bit of, of what this looks like for the user. All right, so here's how this was made. I've got, uh, I'm going to start with the Apex class, and then I've got two Aura-enabled methods, and then there's kind of two helpers that are working there. Um, this is the, the really the main one. And so we say, for this object type, for this many days, here's the fields we want, and here's how many we're gonna allow. And so all this is really doing is, um, is wrapping this other method. And what I'm gonna do there is take a few things, and I've got um, some handlers for, what if you don't give me any fields? What am I gonna do? I'm going to uh, just return the IDs and then uh, this builds the query dynamically and returns that query. And so what, what the Lightning component is just going to get back is this uh, list of records. And then uh, this gets passed down to, um, to the get popular IDs. And, and what we're really doing here is getting a list of aggregate results. And so um, this is actually, this took me a little bit of thought to figure out how I want to do this. And what I'm doing is going through this list of aggregate results and taking out the IDs. And so the aggregate result is actually produced by this little method. And so I'm passing a lot of the same things. But I'm saying, here's, the, here's kind of where the query happens. And this happens in two parts. So the, the first query is, give me the objects that haven't been modified uh, or that have been modified within that window. Um, so we're going to pull those. And that gives us the list of IDs that we're going to be working from. And then, um, so what we do is go through and get those IDs, and then we're going to do an aggregate query, uh, and 
we're really asking about this object called entity subscription, which is uh, what we would call a follow. And it has a parent ID and it has a object ID. Um, or no, the parent ID is the object ID. And then there's, there's a value for the user, which we don't actually care about. And so what we're doing is going through and getting the, the uh, most popular ones, right? So this is where we have our limit. And so how many ever we ask for, we're going to find the ones that have the largest count of ID. And so uh, for any particular record, it may have lots of entity subscriptions, one for each person that's followed it. And so we're just going to find the ones that have the most. So that's how we do, that's how we do popular. But we need the record list first to know what we're searching inside of. Um, this is going to take those aggregate results and get the just the parent IDs out. And so then what this one is finally doing is saying, okay, I know which ones I want, so now get the fields that I asked for on them. Whereas down here, we don't actually care about the fields at all. We just want the popular ones. Uh, and that saves, um, it's three queries, but it saves a lot of work. And then um, the other thing that, that I didn't think of when I first started this was about friendly field names. And so it's really great if you if you pull down the uh, the underscore underscore C, and you can show that. But that's not very friendly to the user. So the other thing I wanted to do was to say, okay, for that object and for that list of fields that you requested, um, we're going to go get them all and get their friendly names and put those in a map, so that then we can say, um, you know, if we have a friendly name for that field, let's go ahead and replace it um, for user friendliness. So those are the two things that the component is going to ask for. It's going to say, okay, give me those records, and there's a couple of steps to that. And then those are the fields I want. Give me what they're, what the users would see. The other thing that's nice about this is if you've done your internationalization and all that type of thing, all that will stuff will inherit with your field mapping. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the apex behind this. Um, here's the controller, or here's the component for the... Uh, it's going to be the outer component. There's actually a component inside it. Uh, but you can see it's got its four attributes that we could define. And there's a design for that as well. And so object, um, how many days, what fields you want, and how many. And then um, these are just the four design attributes for those uh, four component attributes. I've got um, things that happen when it loads. There's really no interaction with this other than to click to the the record, so most of the logic actually happens here in the edit method. Um, I, I've got a lightning require for the lightning design system. Um, if you're not familiar with that, you should check it out. Um, and then all I'm doing is, is creating this uh, this UL, which the lightning design system is going to style as um, a list view with, uh, with dividers in between, and then expecting to have links show up inside the list view. And then we're going to iterate through all the objects. And so this object right here is actually the records that came back. And then inside here, I added a component. And uh, I'll show you what's in the component, and I'll show you how it works. Um, it totally could have been all done in line here. And, but what, I, what I'm thinking is this uh, is a useful enough component that I think I want to have it reusable. And then um, this will actually be blank if there's no records that, are, that meet the criteria. So I did need a conditional statement here to say, you know, if the object count is none, we got no records back from that. Um, you know, here's a little bit of instructions for the, the user or the administrator to figure out what's going on. Um, here's the controller for that component. And so like I said, most of the logic here is in the init. Um, and there's two, those two or enabled methods we're actually going to call both of them right on init. So we're going to get the records and get the map, and those will be um, kind of handled for you on Salesforce. So we're going to get all four parameters. We're going to get the records. Um, what happens when we call back? I want to get both the objects and then we're going to store the object count so it's accessible to, to the component. And then uh, same thing with the field label map and then I just fire both actions off and uh, Lightning will, will batch those and put them together or boxcar them or whatever you call it. But those will go up as one transaction. We're not actually going to take two hits to the server. So that's the, uh, you know, hey, get some data. This is a client side only component. It's called all field displayer. And it's going to take an S object and it's going to take a map of fields. So it says object right here. <laughs> this is, gets really confusing. Um, but object here is a JavaScript object. And in this case, so it's, it's a map of, you know, field name, field label. And uh, 
so it's it's the two things that came in earlier, except it's just one S object and then um, the map of fields, and it's got a uh, it's got an init here, so you can see what it does. But it's all uh, should be all client side. Um, so it's it's kind of simple. It's going to iterate through these things, and um, this is how whatever number of fields that we gave it, it's going to put the name of that field and then the value for that field. And if you gave it five fields, there'll be five rows here. If you gave it one field, like just name or ID, there'll just be one field here. And then um, the controller for this is going to um, have have two things. So on init, uh, I'll do that one first since it happens first. Um, we get the two things off of here. And then we're going to just iterate through the fields and um, assign them to our variable. So this is really just juggling some uh, juggling some data. And putting it where we need to go. I left it to do here because we are not handling um, date time and geolocation stuff very elegantly. If you throw a date time on there you get it in unformatted JavaScript date notation. Um, if you throw a geolocation on there uh, I think it just says object because that's a you know a compound field and you're gonna have the same issue with with addresses. Um, so the, the easiest way to do this is, is probably to say latitude and longitude as separate fields when you're uh, when you're actually making the field list. If you just say location or whatever you've named your geo field, you won't be able to get the, the component fields. Um, and then uh, the the go to record is uh, going to take you. That's how we get to the s object that we're clicking on. And um, so all it's doing is taking the record ID that is passed and then doing the the navigation there. So I do I do onclick go to record. So that way um, these things will take you to the detail page for whatever it is you're trying to look at. So if I, if I look here, I've got my list. If I do a refresh, it'll show my uh, whatever fields I put on there last. Yeah, so that's what they look like. And then you can see these are acting as links, and I can click on and it, it links me to the to the record itself. So it's a pretty simple looking component, but it's got a lot of interesting logic in the back end that uh, hopefully will be useful for you in your development.